All right, so we need to do some more things now. However, I want to show you that you can actually upload multiple images too. So there you go. Now I want to show you that there, there might be an issue here. If we upload files with the same name, then they will be overwritten. And I'll show you here, I'll upload the, a file with the name photo 19 and upload it again. And you'll see that all it did was overwrite it. It did not add a second file. Since a lot of times these images are coming from a camera or a cell phone, they they normally come with a generic naming convention that uh, is similar to other cameras and cell phones. So there's a good chance that you're going to run into a lot of files having the same name, like image underscore one or photo underscore one or something like that. So we need to set up something to randomize how these files get named as they get uploaded. And I have a fairly simple method that I've been using over the years, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So after line four, let's give ourselves some space, and I'm going to explain what we're going to do before we start. We're going to start by creating a timestamp, and that's going to be the first part of the file name. And this is going to be a Unix Epoch timestamp, which is actually the number of seconds from Thursday, January 1st, 1970, to now. So this gives us a fairly unique string of numbers with uh, several digits. Now, this is a good starting point, and you might be able to stop here. But there is still a slight chance that someone could upload a file at the exact second that you do and overwrite yours. Now, maybe on a small site, that's not a big deal, but if you're creating a site that has a lot of traffic and things like that, you could run into this situation. So we're going to add a three-digit random number to slap on the end of this. So the first thing we need to do is find out what the extension of the file name is. Since we're creating this file name from scratch, we're going to definitely need to know that. And the extension, of course, is the you know, .jpg, .png, you know, whatever. So we're going to create a variable, and we're going to call it just ext, short for extension. And we're going to use a built-in function called path info. This takes two parameters. It takes the path and then what information you want returned. And in this case, we just want the extension, which this function actually has a lot of cool information in it. If you want to read up on it in the uh, PHP documentation, you can get a lot of cool information about a file. But again, we just want the extension in this case. So for the first parameter, we're going to do, you know, dollar sign underscore file, then the two keys, file and name, as the first parameter, and then the second parameter is going to be path info underscore extension, all caps. Now the extension is going to be stored in the variable, but remember this does not include the dot of dot jpeg dot png, so we'll have to put the dot in by hand later. This next variable is going to hold the timestamp call it new name equals time with a set of parentheses and this is the function that will generate that epoch timestamp now we need to create a variable called random and we're going to run the random function or r a n d and this takes two parameters the start and the finish or limit i want this to return a three digit number always so i want to start this at 100 and limit it to 999 if I let it start at zero, then there's a chance that I could get a one-digit, two-digit number. So that's why we're starting at 100. So now we need to take these pieces and put them together. So let's create a variable, and we'll call it name. And we start by adding the new name parameter. And what's what's cool about this, what, I, what I've done here, is even though this is now you know a pretty random number, we still have a piece in here that could actually give us some information about the file should we need it somewhere down the line. Because since we know that there is a three digit and always a three digit number at the end of this, we could remove those three digits and then we actually have a timestamp of when the, the uh, file was uploaded. So that's pretty cool. So again, we need to do name equals new name, then concatenate. So dot random. And then we need to add that period in there, that dot. So it's going to be dot quote, dot, quote, dot, 
and then add the extension at the end of it. Close that and now we have our new file name. Now we need to add that to our script down here. We need to swap out our target file with the name here on this line. We'll save that and then test it out. I'm going to grab an image and upload it. And then I'm going to take the same image and drag it over and upload it again. And then here in Aptana, you'll see that it actually created a brand new file for each. So that's pretty cool. Next step we need to take is we need to tell the database to associate this file with a user.